everybody. <laughs> what is up, Kelly Miller? <laughs> You're back and in color there. We can see you now. I I know I've been uh, fading in and out, so not sure. Maybe it's got something to do with the Southwest Airlines delays. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I literally just got home. Not uh -oh. back from uh, Vulture City Paracon two and had a blast. Oh, with, good. With with Jay Maria Yates, so that was really fun. I had a blast. Another amazing couple in the paranormal. Speaking of amazing couples. I know. Let's get us started. I'm so excited. Paranormal. <laughs> I, I'm excited. I'm really Thank excited. Uh, tonight, and I literally just had some pizza, so I'm like, I ah, just... <laughs> Uh oh, buddy. I become coolest and kindest people in the paranormal. Uh, they are loved and known on so many platforms, literally, between ghost hunters, between the house in between, and what else, Kelly? Oh my gosh, the sleepless unrest. Yes. Ah, so, yes. Robin says it's been happening, so we're going to try to get through it, and I'll get it rocked tomorrow. It just happened, so maybe it's the ghost trying to draw the energy from... <laughs> you have to recharge your batteries all the way around. That's what happens, probably. You remember... Uh-oh. You're skipping in and out there, buddy. I'm back. It uh, Facebook, something happened, and then there you go. Bye tonight and we're excited to have peeps that so many people love and all of you love everybody loves please help <laughs> welcome to the show mr kendall and vera welpman <gasps> Hello. what's up hey you're so kind we thank you keith <laughs> oh, thanks for joining us, you two. Hey, so nice to meet you. Thanks, Kelly. In person, but virtually, you know what I mean. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> nice to nice to virtually meet you, Kelly. And yeah. Keith, it's good to see you again. Hey, as as always, you. Oh. Uh, He's cutting out again. Level. I know. I I. It's, We don't uh, <laughs> I think I think so far though, because just a little side note for the two of you and everyone We're not sure, not sure why. In the chat. Um his the faces he makes when the screen freezes are maybe my favorite. Like <laughs> trying to be like, you know, yeah. like yeah, it has you know, been doing teasing it. or whatnot, just, but I mean <laughs> I've caught him so far just making don't... some pretty dandy faces. So I love it. I didn't screenshot any of them, sadly, but they're all winners. All of them have been winners so far. So, but it's all in good fun. <laughs> I agree. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, um, so with you both, you have your new project out. Well, it's officially out, Sleepless Unrest. And um, I would love to maybe hear your take on things, how the project went and anything that you want to share with us. Yeah, uh, Sleepless Unrest. That's um, that's uh, Vera and I's latest film. Uh, it's out everywhere right now. You can get it on um, anywhere you can buy or rent uh, movies. So uh, multiple platforms, VOD platforms. Um, it takes place at the Conjuring Home, which is one of the most notoriously haunted houses in America, if not the world. Um, the 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 story behind the Conjuring Home, if people. Don't know the Conjuring movie. Um, it, there was a film, a feature film that did. Uh, it just is an amazing film by James Wan called The Conjuring. Uh, and then uh, the Perrin family. Um, it's it it's about the Perrins who who lived in a farmhouse in Rhode Island, 
and uh, the Conjuring movie uh, basically tells their story uh, about the Warrens visiting uh, the, the the farmhouse, and and so the sleepless unrest uh, takes place at the house that inspired the movie, The Conjuring. There you go. <laughs> now he's back. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, and I, I've been okay. watching and listening and letting Kelly okay, running because I'm, I'm in and out. <laughs> good. Well, that's that's fabulous. So how long, when you all were there to do your film, how long did you spend there? We stayed there for two weeks. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, like, was that on location and sleeping and things like that? Everything was there? Completely, yeah, spending the night. It was winter, so okay. there was nowhere. We really didn't go anywhere, you know, during COVID. We didn't want to really okay. go out and interview all the extra people we, we didn't need to. It was just us in the house with the owners, and that's it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was it was definitely one of the most challenging projects I've ever done in my life because uh, oh, sure. of yeah. so many reasons, so many levels. Oh, wow. uh, Post-production is also as well. It was one of the most, cha for, for us, I think it was the most challenging of our projects just because um, we're eating, sleeping, and working out of uh, the location um, for a long period of time. So you don't get much sleep. Uh, number one, but number two, you have paranormal activity happening uh, while you're there. You're on, you know, you're going to the bathroom. Not you're you're man. you're you're brushing your teeth. You're you're in the shower. Like there's there's like you're there, so stuff is happening. So it's an active investigation, you know, all the way through. So is the second we walk through the threshold of the door at the house, it was on. It was it was oh. investigation mode and. You know, um, for Vera and I, our goal is to capture the evidence or capture um, the experiences on camera. So it's not a personal experience. It's a it's a documented experience to show y'all. And, you know, for us, that's challenging. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of challenges in this project. We um, we went into the project not doing um, much research. We didn't want to get ourselves uh we, we didn't want to have any influence, some any outside influence on on our story or our project. Um, so we chose to not not watch any of the shows that had shot there, not really pay attention to anything, and just go in with a clean slate and tell our story. And our story basically is is you know four friends, Brian Rochelle invited us to go hang out at the Conjuring home. And you know we, we decided to film. <laughs> we decided to film. We we hopped we hopped in the car two weeks later. You know after getting everything squared away, getting the babysitter planning and getting our camera gear ready, and we hopped in the car and literally documented everything, everything from the beginning, from our house to even at the end after the the case. So it's kind of one of the most documented cases i've ever done uh most thorough documented cases most thorough investigations i've done um you know it was it was, it was a lot of fun it was a lot of uh hard work it was uh pretty exhausting it was exhausting i i mean we couldn't have done it with without brian rochelle um you know they they just were amazing uh to, to they have were such good troopers i mean they're really um I we put them through everything. They really worked really hard and <laughs> and never once lost their temper, their cool. Every day was fun. Uh, we, I mean, it was really, truly a group of friends, including the homeowners, uh, okay. Corey and Jane Heinzen, who, you know, all of us who absolutely are 100% passionate about this field and, and you can tell something will happen and everybody will be like, whoa, let's go find out and yeah. super yeah. adventurous. And, you know, sometimes, Debunking too a yeah, lot, yeah. a, a yeah. lot of times. Yeah. Uh, it was a group effort for sure, and it was yeah. a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. A yeah. lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Now, was that your first? I know you said you tried to keep your story very, um, you know, un <laughs> infiltrated from other stories. But was that your first visit there when you filmed? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was our first time there. Okay. Um, I know Ghost Hunter. I, I worked on the show Ghost Hunters for many years. And actually, I started Ghost Hunters like three episodes after they had been there. So I just missed the first time that the Ghost Hunters had been there. Okay. So yeah, I never, I never had gone, and um, it was, it was actually, I'm, I'm kind of glad we didn't. It was, it was a location that you know nobody's been to, 
and um, it was just kind of kind of went with our experience, which was just kind of each day just experiencing. And it was cool because I got to experience that with you for the yeah, first time. Yeah, like he's yeah. been over 500 locations, and even though sometimes the locations new to me, and I'm like, oh, this is so exciting. He's like, yeah, I've been there, done that. So this one was completely brand new. He was excited, I was excited. But if he got scared, then I got scared because sure. he doesn't get scared. Nothing scares this guy. I'm for, for real. <laughs> Maybe bats. <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah. I've heard of some things. <laughs> I've heard, but yes, bats in the dark are creepy. But, yeah. That's you know, I at you, man. Already in your mind, you think bats ah, creepy, <laughs> and then they're right by your face, and you're like, ah. So, uh, yeah, you know, they that's don't the bother thing me. About, <laughs> yeah, no, they don't so, bother me either. Bats not, not so bother. much. Yeah. Now, big fat spider, no. different story, but that's, I'm okay with that, so. No. That either. Yeah. Everybody's no, got their I think one thing, right? I mean, you know. Yeah, it's snakes. Yeah. No, snakes. Nothing snakes snakes are creepy. What the, what the, snakes are creepy. Okay, we got a <laughs> creepy snake thing. Yeah, that's for a lot of people. So what's so cool about this place is, is that with all the stuff that's out there, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this was the first town. It was like this really long lockdown, like a paranormal vacation or paranormal. You're there, you're set up, you're there, and you're rolling. It's not just an overnighter. You guys were there for days. We unpacked. We moved in. Showers. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. moved in. We lived with the, you know, lived how the homeowners live. Mm. It, that was that was our goal to really kind of see what it's like to experience a haunting as as through the homeowner's eyes and in it's different it's totally different than just going in and doing an investigation for you know a few hours and then leaving like you're you're totally immersed into into the the situation you know into your your staying there and and experience in it yeah, it was truly really yeah. life-changing because we investigated a lot we did all the protocols we did all the equipment uh, some of the equipment never got triggered. Uh, we have this parallel light who you, that you bought, yeah. and you were super excited. It never went off. Never. He oh. thought it was broken. We send the, <laughs> you were about to send the back, and then we after that we tested it, and then it went off. So it's working. But you know, anyway, the the point is sometimes nothing would happen, and it would just I don't know where we're just like la 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 la, you know, talking about whatever, eating snacks, and then bam, something would happen, and it's like go 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 go. <laughs> Camera is like. <laughs> That's a good point, and that brings me to that. Uh, you two, do you feel like when that were those times where something just happened, do you think that was a residual event at that time that was looping, just coming back in time happening at 3.30, that something happened and you go to it and then it's gone? That's a good question, I, but in our experience, no, it, it didn't feel, feel like that, that way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the way... F the way it behave it was very intelligent it was calculated almost okay. it was very interesting mm -hmm. so so that had the that had the four components of when you you get into hauntings so it involves the land the building the souls both of the living and the past and the contents so of the four what do you think is the one that really draws the most paranormal activity uh, and, and and why i i must say i feel like and this is like just kind of off the cuff and like just kind of like i feel like our vibration was super high like we all like brian rochelle vera and i we all were super excited about being there we were like i don't know we we're in tune with like the goal and like the focus and everything and as a team we were working really well together and i feel like I feel like it kind of was like, I, I don't know. I feel like there was something to that. I feel like there was might might have been something to yeah, you connected like the, the connection yeah. there. Yeah. Um. And then, but but I also feel like it also separated each of us at times where, like for me, I it's not in the film, but I got touched there. Like I've never been touched. Oh. I've been everywhere. I I asked for it. I put my hands out, <laughs> and it was very gentle. 
I asked, you know, can you touch to touch my arms? Can you touch you were me? were in the basement. And I was in the basement. Next to the well. And come to find out, we didn't know any of the claims. We would Stuff would happen to us, and we'd go to Corey and Jen, and we'd be like, hey, this happened last night. Um, has that ever happened? And we're like, actually, that happens all the time there. That's what we always hear that that happens, and that's a claim down in the basement is that people, males, males get touched down in the basement. And um, I was so sad that it didn't show up on the camera. I thought for sure, you know, you'd see like the sleeve move or like you'd see like the jet, my jacket in print. Because it felt so real. It felt, you. I mean, it felt so real. It felt like pressure. It was there for a while. It moved in, held, held, and then it, you know, slowly backed away. And it was very gentle and it wasn't what I would expect to be, you know, a physical uh, touch of, of some, you know, thing that you, some force that you can't see. It was very, uh, very interesting. And, you know, um, so that was my personal experience. And I feel like every one of us kind of had one of those there. Oh, yeah. So yeah. that's a good question I want to ask you two. So, you know, you're, you're familiar with FLIR and everything else, uh, you two. Have you noticed that when you get something like that, maybe a touch, maybe something on a couch, maybe a bed, that you're able to take a FLIR, get a reading, and say, wow, I see a handprint in, in FLIR. I see maybe there's a little bit of heat residual compared to the surroundings. There's nothing. Have you no Did you notice that there to where when you did experience that, that the FLIR picked up on it? We, we didn't have it on at that time. We didn't have the FLIR on, on me. It was kind of an in prompt like just feeling it. it like i was yeah. just like i was feeling it i was in the well room and actually um we, we had something that was just as good as the FLIR, and it was the emc cd camera that wow. was on me was it on yeah it was on it was on me it was the only camera that was on me actually well no there was the other there was our cameras but my, yeah my, you're having but um the emc cd camera was the one that could see completely in the dark and there was nothing registering on that camera. There was no um, photon events of any sort happening. So it's just interesting. It was an event that went recorded, but nothing showed up on the on the technology that we were filming with. God, that's, oh, wow. that's that, wow, that, that is fascinating because it's almost as much as you want to try to document that and say, okay, we, we're seeing this. It's happening. It's right now. As much equipment as you have in that grid, you know, as you well know, can, you know, and you're thinking, I'm going to get a hit with this, a shadow detect, something's going to pick a motion detector or something, or even an EDI, and it escapes right through and nothing triggered. And you're like, how the hell does it keep doing that? Yeah. It's crazy. It just, it keeps you going like, I know one day I'm going to get it. I know one day I'm going to get it. I know it keeps pushing you. And that's kind of what happened there, right? It just kept yeah, skipping around, yeah. tricking you. Wow. It yes. skipped around. Here's another one. Um, we were filming in the, the, the seance room, the living room area that where, you know, everything's gone down, the main foot, the main area of the house. We're all in just hanging out, filming uh, the, the fireplace area. And we hear and feel this loud boom. And I, it was actually so much, I like panned over to where I thought the sound was. I jumped back. Vera, sorry, Vera, like, um, Vera's like, oh my God. Like, we all reacted to it. And um, we played it back, and there's no audio mm -hmm. anywhere of it. We all heard it. We, it, all we had like we had like five cameras rolling. Our hearts were like, doo, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. What was that? that I don't was understand. I don't, I don't get it at all. Um, because we felt the floor, like, yeah. boom, you know, we felt the, the vibration of it. And then it. it started shaking, remember? Yeah, and we thought, we actually thought it was an Corey, earthquake. We thought oh, it was, wow. yeah. yeah. And Corey checked the checked the readings for, for that time in the area of earthquakes, and there was nothing. Because yeah. the dogs went crazy after that. They were wow. just like, how, like, totally just... So it was it was being tricky. I, I don't know. I can't explain it, but um, mm. there was a lot of a lot of stuff like that. Massive battery drain during an interview. Oh, that was weird. We were um, doing an interview with um, Brian Rochelle, Rochelle and uh, Brian thought he saw somebody walk past behind me. He thought it was Jen. And he thought it was Jen, and we you know nobody was back there. And then all of a sudden, but my camera. He didn't camera, say it. I mean, he really didn't say anything. He was just kind of. It was kind of freaked kinda out like, a little like bit. Looking. Yeah. Like, uh, and then my 
my camera battery drained and I'm like, okay, change the battery. Like I'm a camera guy, you know, I have like lots of batteries. I went through um, 12 or 13 batteries okay. all within like 10 minutes, which is, I've never, I mean, sure, maybe a couple, three, four got, we're, we're in the uncharged, in the charged bin that we're uncharged, you know, but like 13 batteries, like completely going from start to finish, like empty. I, I don't know. That's weird. And then, you know, we right you know we we're feeling like this weird feeling behind us like a big tall something kind of hovering over us yeah. it was interesting and you can't do i mean you try to document the the feelings but you know you pan the camera around you you just sometimes you don't capture that it's just a feeling it's and it's almost like they know by design as they hear us we're like gosh dang it the battery's drained and they're like ha ah, got them now and then they just, I, maybe they come up and then you'll get this benefit and then it's gone. And then they're like, gosh, dang it. And they're over here, <laughs> gone. And then by the time you look around, it's like by design, that's what they keep doing. We had that happen this weekend, in fact, at Vulture City. And this one very, very mean spirit who we have on the recorder is, la is la he laughed and he said some very uh, words I won't say on this show. But he knew it, and he would he did it, and he was like, he was like, that's him, and everybody said, yep, that's the guy. He threw rocks on the building last time. The energy they have sometimes, and what they do is like beyond my comp comprehension of how they do what they do. But yet we don't see them doing it at the time they do it. It just happens. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Vera, did you have experience as well, like personal experience when you were there? Um, oh, a ton. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to go quiet the kids down real quick. I'll be yeah, right can back. you hear them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, hear little, okay. I hear little, okay. I hear little <laughs> goblins in the background. They're <laughs> supposed to be in the room watching their movie. It's like, um, I had several. One of them, I think Brian and Rochelle uh, and Kendall were in the library, and they were getting an interview done. And I just went real quick to the kitchen to have a little snack. I had some like chicken wings left over, and I was just like getting a quick bite to eat. <laughs> and I don't know what I felt like a really distinctive, you know, that feeling when somebody's watching you. And I didn't turn because I was like, oh, it's that camera. That camera's probably Corey and Jen, you know, checking their cameras, and I'm just I'm feeling it. I don't know. So I ignored it. And the feeling wouldn't go away. And then I realized that camera wasn't turned on. I just remember, I was like, that camera's not on. Then I was like, that feeling, like that feeling is too distinctive. So I just turned around real quick like that. And then on the window, the kitchen window, I just saw something that was like, like kind of like picking and just went like that. And I was like, mm. and I, 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 it was so real. I thought that has to be one of the guys. They want. They're gonna scare me because I, I, I scared a little bit uh, Rochelle earlier, and I, sh I, I knew she was gonna get me back. And uh, I, I know I was like, she's gonna. It was hurt. I know it. I'm not gonna let him. So I just took off really quick, and you see me like in the DVR camera, going like, just kind of like. And then my face when I realized that everybody, everybody's in that room. Nobody was outside. And I'm just like, uh, I don't have no idea what I saw. Brian was uh, kind enough to get up and, and she went outside and kind of, you know, with a GoPro and just kind of took around and look and see there was no footprints. And he, he, he thought that what I saw was probably about four, five, four feet tall, maybe. Yeah, to reach up to that window, maybe four, to that, four that five, way. five, maybe. No, four, four, four five. Foot, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it was strange. And then it's weird because like two weeks later, or so after we came back, uh, Corey Heinsen sent us a video from another paranormal team that went there after us and they were investigating the basement. And he, they caught a little figure. And what I saw was kind of gray, kind of like uh, like a shape like round, but kind of grayish, kind of weird. And then uh, they sent a, a, a video where this paranormal team called this a very similar figure in the basement. Wow. And he scared me. And I did the same thing. It was like it was picking, like and then he went like this. And I was just like, oh, like I almost like <laughs> dropped to the ground because I was like, Kendall, I think that's what I saw. Um, but I don't know. So, yeah, that's such validation when it wasn't just you that yeah, was able to sense that. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go this time. Yeah. I'll take your turn. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> the, folks, this goes to show you these are live shows. We, we, all, we, all, we, all, we all have kiddos. I got fur babies. I got it all. So, Aww. trust me, they, um, 
they know. As far as challenging and you doing the filming that you do, uh, Kendall, what would you say on a level of this being a challenging as far as the setup, the angles, the lighting, overall? I mean, because this is, I've been there, and you got some very tiny, tight quarters going down the stairs, you know, of course, going up, the basement. How, how complex level was this? at this shoot for this uh, location. Yeah, this was one of the more challenging projects that I've I bit my teeth into for sure because um, number one, we're trying to document um, you know what evidence is there, any kind of paranormal activity, which is, you guys know, is super hard. You gotta almost predict the future, where to set up cameras in the claims area, you know, this, that. The best thing we can do is like throw a million cameras at it and have them rolling all the time. So that's kind of what we did. We had 14 cameras, um, DVR cameras. We had the the um, the house system, which is Corey and Jen's house system, and then we had our uh, DVR camera system, and then uh, and then we have these little GoPros like re on the ready just to grab them and go like um, on the sides of our beds or you know wherever. Just you know we bring them to the bathroom with us when we're when we're showering you know not rolling but you know we're just in case like you know just in case, you just never know and it's our goal is to capture that stuff so you know you're kind of thinking about that all the time but for vera and i it, it, you're also shooting for a documentary that we're trying to shoot very cinematically which that's super challenging it's it's very very uh very very hard to plan on that because you're you're really just kind of going in the moment and filming in the moment so you have to be kind of you know I have a lot of years of experience cinematically shooting so I can kind of have stuff on the ready to pull it in you know lighting I didn't really light that much I relied on some very uh, low light very good low light cameras um, so did a lot of natural lighting maybe put up a one light or two lights here and there but um, but yeah I mean for us, it was very challenging, um, especially the production side of things. Keep making sure your audio is all rolling. I mean, we didn't have any audio guys. We had it was just Vera and I, um, you know, doing the doing the production stuff. So it, it you know, we got we're, we have to stay on top of our audio. We have to stay on top of, you know, the cameras, charging batteries, organizing media. So it was, I mean, it was a lot. It was a it was a lot, but it was kind of rewarding in the fact that it was such a big challenge for us. And the fact that we were able to pull it off, I think that was, um, I think that was like one of those things on your, on your like bucket list or your, you know, like you're like, dang, I, I can't believe I pulled that off. You're kind of almost proud of yourself. It's yeah. definitely, definitely hard to do. So it's Aww. challenging, but you know, I got a, I, I got a whole, there's so many things and I want to get them in because there's amazing. So the sleepless unrest, no doubt about it, kind of latest piece of work. Uh, and I'm sure there's some things in the future, but let's go a little bit back in time to your catalog, uh, and let's look at uh, the House in Between, uh, documentary that so many people got a chance to look at, and to get to work with somebody you love and respect as well, you know Steve Conglis, uh, and what his works were with Ghost Hunters before, uh, and 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 Brad and and and, and Miss Alice and. Uh, course john and, and mm -hmm. his wife but such a beauty of how it would that was another family family uh, type atmosphere event tell us a little bit about that as far as some of the things that you just hold as one of your you both of you's beautiful piece of work on that some highlights yeah the, the house in between um vera and i um started robot ninja media 2017 shortly after um, Steve Gonzalez from Ghost Hunters um, gave me a call and said, "Hey, I got this house that um, that's very interesting." And um, Vera and I uh, said, "Let's do it!" You know, right away. It was like we we talked to Alice, John, and Brad, people at the house. Um, there was a lot going on, you know, and and it was just kind of a no brainer. The story was um, was one of concern because Alice had moved out of her house. She had moved out for many years and she had been dealing with a haunting at her place. It freaked her out. And you know, the, this, this poor lady is, is 
dealing with so many things, you know, everything from giving up her house, uh, the, the paranormal to uh, the, uh, what do I want to say, the, um, the, the conception of her being the crazy lady with the haunted house on the street, you know what I mean? So there was a lot of, a the lot stigma. of, yeah, the stigma of a haunting, you know, it was, it was, um, you know, Alice didn't deserve that, you know, and it was, it was a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going on there that I felt like we needed to, um, really get the story and get it and tell it right. And, and, and especially with what was going on there. I mean, you have John and Brad who are the paranormal investigators, essentially that Alice, handed over the keys to her house to to investigate and then they had investigated for 10 years a decade Figured so out what it is that yeah. is haunting them and and I, I hadn't seen that before um with the amount of you know evidence and documentation that they had done on the house so um yeah the, i mean it took a while to put everything together they had tons of footage you know we had to sift through and it her all story's and, fascinating because i mean what do you do when you get scared like you don't just move out, you sell the house. Right. You're like, I'm <laughs> done with that. I've heard many stories of people that just move away. She's right. like, no, I'm going to open it up and we, I'm going to find out what this she is. She embraced it. She embra I mean, well, I wouldn't say embraced it in the beginning. I mean, she handed uh, her house over to... She was open yeah. to find out, find answers. Sure. She wanted to know. She needs answers. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what keeps her going. She wants to know what it is that she saw. It's not just about... I want to open it to the paranormal field. Like, that's a big part now after the documentary mm -hmm. happened. I think she's like, she sees the, the, the potential there and, and, and she wants to be part of that. But in the beginning, it was like, uh-uh, I'm not going to run. I'm going to find out what that was. And I love that about her. Yeah, yeah. she's... George has, so, yeah. Got a, yeah, George has got an amazing uh, type setting question that also ties in with the unrest into also... The house in between, and it's the land. How do you think, with the sleepless unrest and the house in between, that that land plays a part and how it contributes to the haunting? That's yeah, that's a very good question. I feel like it's very connected. I feel like um, I think we need to take our mindset uh, from the walls of of a structure being haunted to outside a little more uh i feel like there's possibly more to it um the more we kind of start to peel back the onion of of the po the potential of land having some kind of catalytic thing that that makes you know the paranormal happen in these hot spots uh i i feel like there's there's something happening there that we should pay attention to the land a little more mm -hmm. i that's, agree that's and that's the thing is as we go out there uh, you and you know, Kendall, you've been around with your wife. You've been out there going and doing so many very cool things. You've been all the way to the realms of Alaska, to the Midwest, and pretty much with ghost hunters all over. And you go to these locations to where sometimes a structure is built on the dead that never got to say, "Hey, I have a story. I, I was, you know, I was murdered." I, you know, I died here. Nobody, you know, said, hey, is it okay that I come here? Um, there's a beauty in it that in it itself, I think once you do peel back that onion, and then they're like, thank you. Thank you for telling my story. And then there's almost this resolved tranquility afterwards. It's like it's almost like a peace and butterflies. They're like, thank you. I feel so beautiful now. And did you feel as if when that happens that the haunting kind of just goes into like more of a, just a resolve and a peace? Mm. What do you think? You know, um, that's, that, that's, I, I see what you're saying. Um, but from our experience, I feel like, like when we go into these places, we immediately kind of introduce ourselves and say, Hey, we're here to tell your story. Right. And, you know, we're very clear about our intentions. Yeah. We're not being tricky. We're not, you know, we treat them like people. And, um, you know, the, the most respect to the, to these locations. Um, and I, I, I just... We treat them like people. We treat them with respect because you don't know if it's always a human. That's true. But I'm saying, like, treating a location like you would another human being. That's what I meant to say. Oh. But um, the the... the the house 
you know, I, I feel like there's a possibility that that could be happening. Um, but you know, I don't, I haven't, I don't know. I haven't spent enough time after the investigation going back to see, you know, if, if things feel that way okay. or the, you know what I mean? I, I, I guess, I guess it would be up to the homeowner to let me know if it's died down and the homeowner's experience is going to be way different than my experience while I was there. So it's kind of hard to say. Okay. I think it depends on the case. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the thing. Not every case is different. Sometimes it's the land. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's the person who's living in, in the house. Sometimes it is the house. Sometimes it's just someone attached who is attached to the house. Um, there's so many different cases that we've studied that yeah. um, it's really hard to say, like, this is a hunting. And I mean, we, always, keep, like, we keep getting our... <laughs> You know, we keep getting surprised. It's it's just interesting. Yeah. You think you've seen you've seen the same thing here and there, but like it's just interesting because we're seeing a lot of different things as well as some of the same things. So it's I feel like it's just random. I feel like there's you know there's a ram, randomness to it, but also you know with the land, there's certain things that kind of that kind of like I said before, kind of a catalyst situation. Wow. Sure. So Steve uh, 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 Gonzo actually has a question. It is a, it is a good one. At any point, do you two feel threatened on some of these cases? Like, wow, okay, something's really not good. We need to pull back and, and re re address this. Um, you know, you have before. And yeah, you know, and there, there was, I went, I remember going to the House of Wills once and, you know, I, I was working as a camera guy there and um, it just, you know, I know I was with the Ghost Brothers and, the, and they didn't like it. Uh, I, I agree with them. It didn't feel right. Like it was just, it was just a weird, dark kind of feeling, you know, and, and I think that one kind of got me a little bit. I feel like that one really just kind of was like, okay. You know that dark feeling that people talk about. I feel like that that might have been there. Um, a lot of the cases I've been to, I haven't felt that. Um, but you know, and I haven't backed down off of a case either. I haven't like ran out of a place. I did run out a long time ago when I had my first experience at my my house. Um, but I think that was the only time that I, I ever I ever kind of backed down or ran away from something. That's a good question, and and. Uh, a statement from that, and a question from that is this, as many places as both of you have been, but either one of you, do you feel as if something may have uh, tagged on to you and said, hey, this, this Kindle guy's a nice guy, or this bear is so sweet, I need someone to, to be there for me. Has anything attached to you guys and, and set up camp and, and came and followed you home? I, you know, and all this is kind of speculation a little bit and intuition kind of, you know, it's, we don't have proof of any of this all other than our experiences. Uh, but in our personal experience, yes, we have experienced things okay. that could point to multiple that. cases uh, too, multiple, not just. Yeah, different cases. The most recent one, this uh, conjuring house, which uh, was probably one of the most dramatic experiences uh that wow. we had after we we came home and in the beginning kind of wasn't so sure um i'm usually the one who's a little more uh in tune and sensitive and you know he's more like he he's like eh, go, ignore it go away like, it'll go away <laughs> kind of like that like the guy uh, those guys yeah guys you know yeah, typical th this. typical thing uh until he started experiencing some things too and I'm just like, I told you, yeah. not take care yeah. of this. I did so. Yeah. <laughs> I told you. Um, so. I mean, we, yeah. Then we, it, it got, there was a couple of nights that were quite scary. And completely. I think it's a lot more scary when, when you're at your house yeah. that's not haunted and is like. We have children. You know, yeah. you know? and you're, you're off guard and all that. And, you know, you start hearing the noises or whatever. Um. That one night, and then you know my daughter, my daughter was affected. Um, it's I, I don't like it. Uh, we 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 deal with that stuff um, accordingly, and we're um, Christian. We are. Uh, right. We I mean that's what we do. Right. That's um, how we go 
to a spiritual battle. That's what we yeah. chose to. I mean, that's how, how we do it. Uh, we had several people actually kind of coming forward to help as help well. Us, yeah. uh, and I don't know where sometimes some people would just text us, hey, I feel like this is going on. And we're like, mm-hmm. They were tapping into it too. <laughs> it makes like, it even it was more weird. real. It was really when weird. When we're not even telling anybody, yeah. nobody really. And uh, even even before the film came out, and it made it even more scary because people were actually reaching out to tell us some of these things. Uh, so we it, did we, bring we, home. We brought home an object from yeah, the house. You did. We. I I brought it home. <laughs> I was given to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Corey Corey Heinze gave me a souvenir from the house. It was from a place in the house that had never been visited, and you know we took an object from there, and I brought it home. And you know I don't I don't know like I don't want to put much into that, but um, I did give it. You know I did take it back, and we didn't think anything of it. We didn't think, oh, yeah. you know, for it was just a gift, like a souvenir. Yeah. It was just like, here, we didn't think anything. Yeah. We didn't expect nothing to happen. In fact, because we had so much fun. Uh-huh. It was a fun experience with some a scary back. personal yeah. moments. But, you know, at the end, it was fun. We, we were there with our friends. We absolutely loved uh, Corey and Jen Heinsen. Uh, we didn't want to leave. Oh. It was time to go. We didn't want to go. And even as we're leaving, like, you've, it was this weird, like, super sad feeling like you wow. didn't you wanted to come was, back yeah. although we need to sleep and everything yeah. is this weird <laughs> yeah. feeling of like and then the dreams after that dream after dream and the nightmare 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 and then our daughter started saying things that you know she didn't know what we're doing we don't tell her hey guess what we went to this house it's like one of the most haunted houses in the world she doesn't she didn't know she anything didn't keep that from her uh we didn't even edit the film at home we weren't doing any of that we had a separate editor there was no cross-contamination there whatsoever and then once we started experiencing things uh we were like you think it's a nail do you think the nail has anything to do She's with like, it? She's like, get the nail out of the house. You need to get it out of here now. <laughs> I was like, okay. So I put um, it in the garage, and then and then it stayed in the garage for a while. And then um, during the Conjuring camp out that we did, uh, we camped out in the backyard. We went back to the Conjuring house, and um, we brought the nail and gave it to uh, Cody and Satori. They have, like, a haunted museum, and yes. we gave it to them to, to hold on for us and, you know. To see what happens. To see what happens, you know, um, study it. And, and sure enough. It was... So, yeah, it's, cool. it's calmed it's down. Mellow. Yeah, it's been okay. mellow. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. But in the beginning, like, it was intense, and we just don't know. Uh, well, here's the thing. We're like, at least me, I was like, I'm exhausted. It's me, sure. of course. I went through a really, you know, adrenaline kind of rush and lack of sleep, and I, I got scared hangover. several times. Right, yeah. I was scared quite a few times. Um, and then... I was like, it's me. And then he started experiencing things, and I'm like, oh, it's you too. And then Brian calls us, and he's like, oh, you know, something happened last night. And we're like, what? And then Rochelle calls us, oh, something happened to me last night. My dog is like, I mean, there has so much happened. We're like, film it, film it, because we need need to document. And they didn't film half of the things that happened to them. Because they're not thinking about that anymore. Yeah, I mean, your guard home. is down when you're home. They're you're home, but they were too. experiencing a ton of stuff, too. And we're like, what's happening right now? Which was also <laughs> one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do was film my daughter freaking out. Which I didn't even know experience. he was filming. He's so good. It was... He, the, 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 I, he, I he hated it. the iPhone. And you, you always it. have your iPhone. I mean, I do. So I, like, I'm like ready to go, you know, just... <laughs> and I'm just So, like, it's. I mean, it's built into me, but... I, I don't know. That was that was a tough one. That was a real tough one, yeah. and and that's the thing is like here we are trying to tell our whole story about you know our experience of an investigation for a long period of time, and um, you know we had no idea the investigation was going to continue after we got home. Yeah, it's just you know our whole thing was like let's tell this story, you know, from start to finish. Well, it didn't finish leaving the house, you know, so. Right. I mean, it only felt right to to have that in the film, and you know, I I feel like it it does tell a good, accurate story of of our experience. You know, a good good timeline of things. Speaking of good times and amazing things, how about we go back in the vault? 
way <laughs> back when. Uh oh. Back on the rock star day. Uh oh. Of a young, a young Kendall Walton, uh, and Vera, back in the <gasps> days of ghost hunters. <laughs> uh, when did you get that call, Kendall? When the day was that you're gonna say? You're going to go be filming these guys walking around filming ghosts. When was it, and how did that go? Um, so, let's see. I was um, I was like a, a, a filmmaker, like do everything, editor. I was a graphics um, guy. I was a valet parking attendant <laughs> living in L.A. I, um, man, I was doing so many things. I was doing these instant films. Like, you know, shoot a film on a Friday and premiere it on a, on a Sunday. Um, I just wanted to dive headfirst into filmmaking and filming and everything. And um, so I finished up um, with a, a job, a paid job. I, you know, I was getting those a little bit here and there. And um, I was going on Craigslist, and that was where you used to look for the work. And I went on Craigslist, and I saw an ad that said, um, Ghost Hunting Show Gearing Up Fast and uh need of a cameraman and i was like okay that's that's cool i i had this experience um many years before that i lived in an old um hospital and in, in colorado and i had a very profound experience so i was very interested in the paranormal um growing up very interested in the paranormal i was like this is perfect for me i will go and and apply for this job so i applied uh and two days later i got a call and they're like come up uh I wasn't living in LA. I was actually, sorry, I was in um, in Costa Mesa, Orange County. And I went up to the production company and did an interview. And they essentially hired me on the spot. They hired me right on the spot and flew me out two days later. And um, I was at uh, Cedral, what is it? Um, Sorrel, the Sorrel Weed House in New Orleans. And um, New Orleans? was it New Orleans? Where is it? Florida? Savannah, sorry, Savannah, Georgia. Oh, Savannah. In Savannah, Georgia. Sorrel <laughs> Weed House in Savannah, Georgia. And, uh, and, and yeah, that was my first case with the show, and I stayed on for many years after that. What a rock star journey. I'm talking about <laughs> successful tour after rock. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> and yet coming back next year with a new album, Ghost Hunters. <laughs> years. Then you get to the end of one group, and it starts with another. After so many years, it comes back in a new group. And um, tell us a little bit about that. So what was the, some of your feelings for when it came back and, and that? Well, first I should rewind because um, people that don't know Vera and I, um, I was on Ghost Hunters for a while, and then there was a spinoff show that Steve and Tango got that was called Ghost Hunters Academy. And I did the first season of that, and then I'd go do Ghost Hunters, and then I got invited back to do another season of Ghost Hunters Academy. And um, so I did that. And then I just remember, um, I remember this really beautiful girl in the, in the, um, in the lobby of the hotel and she's kind of looking at me and I was like, Oh boy, this is, this isn't good. <laughs> Felt the sparks. And uh, yeah, Vera, um, Vera and I started dating after the show and, um, I moved to Texas, and then we started having children, and like got married, got married, had children, and yeah, <laughs> got married first, and then had children, hey. and then uh, and then you know, and then uh, and then fast forward to a lot of um, DP work. Um, I did uh, Ghost Hunters, um, I did Wicked Tuna, I did Ghost um, Brothers, Ghost Brothers, um, geez, Trip Flip, Trip Flip, a uh, bunch of a bunch of shows, and then. Uh, and then I got the call for uh, the, the, the pipeline. You know, the pipeline was rumbling that Ghost Hunters is coming back because it was off the air. Um, and, you know, we did, I didn't know much about it. I got asked to do the new season of Ghost Hunters. And, um, and so, yeah, I ended up uh, doing the new season of Ghost Hunters. And, um, that's, and how that's, that's how I met Rochelle. Brian Rochelle, yeah. And I met them over the, the phone. We hit it off immediately. We were just like, oh, yeah. just I, friends forever. And then until we met, we met for the first time at the Conjuring House. So oh. I got to I got to hang out with uh, Kristen Luman and uh, that this weekend. 
Oh, and cool. She's, she's a real sweetheart. We had some yeah. really fun times uh, and just good investigations, really good times. Uh, and so what do you see now with just your thoughts, just totally personal thoughts of the new spin with the now the other side with Ghost Hunters coming back with uh, with Jason? Yeah, um, Ghost Hunters uh, originally started with, you know, Jay, Steve, Grant, Tango, um, you know, and it's gone through, um, it's gone through a lot of years, and it's just awesome to see the guys back, you know, uh, right. Jay, Steve, Tango, um, I know they're going to put their best foot forward for investigation, right. I know that, um, I know that there's going to be a lot of neat stuff, I mean, it's Ghost Hunters, you you can count on the the brand at this yeah. point, you know. You can you can see it and know that you're just going to watch an amazing show. So I can't wait to uh, to go down and, and watch I it with Vera. Watch Vera it. and I yeah. are, are huge fans of Ghost Hunter, so we're super excited. I got I butterflies, know. and I was telling Kendall that like, I feel like I got butterflies because you know, even before I met you, I was a big fan of the show when I started. Like, it's one of the first shows that I started watching when I was searching for answers with some of the stuff that I had experienced. So, mm -hmm. you know, we go way back, even yeah. even before yeah. I met you. Yeah, he was watching Ghost Hunters <laughs> so, before we met. So, you yeah. know, it's like one of those things that you just kind of, you it's always part love. Of us. Yeah, yeah, it's part of it's part of it, yeah. And, it, and it's been a big part of so many people yes. And, yes. And, and his career. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if, how could you even in your resume of doing investigations and not say, at one point, I was impacted by Ghost Hunters? Because I think it's the one thing, and this is with Holmes, you get a feeling of real. Uh, I, I'll probably have to be very careful or I'll start getting emotional. But Grant instills so much in me about turning that chair around, sitting down, and just asking somebody, so how can we help you? You know, what's going on? And, and, and with that with him, I've carried that. So... To go back and say that I'm a, you know, I'm a student of Grant Wilson, I, I take great pride in that because he says if you'll do that, Keith, and treat each person as if it's your family that you're helping, you'll continue to do good things. So, just like you two have been doing great things. Speaking oh, of great yeah. things, what's next? What's and next? Yeah. What's next? What's next? Any, anything you can share that is, but I'm curious. Yeah, what you can, I mean. If you say little teasers like, you know, <laughs> if I were you, I'd be watching. Yeah, we, we have some exciting stuff coming coming up here. We're we're in full swing over here. We're oh, good. we're yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean it's awesome. We're given a lot of great opportunities. Uh, this community has been just so, so amazing, amazing to us. Super supportive. It gives us motivation to keep going. It gives us that opportunity <laughs> to keep going. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, as long as people are watching the films, we're going to keep making them for everyone. And mm -hmm. we're, we're going to do better and better each time. We're learning each time, just like an investigation. You learn from your investigation. We're learning from filming these things. And um, we're just excited about our new projects. I, I can't really say much because... You know, we're right. we're not there yet. Not there yet. Well, but soon enough. But yeah, soon enough. I mean, it, it's cool. It's you know, it, we always try to do different. You know, we always try to do. Um, <laughs> which, oh, what's up, Rochelle? Rochelle! Woo! Aww. Yeah, girl. Got you. Awesome. Yeah. Her, her and Brian, uh, I've got to investigate with him, and I tell you. They laugh. They see me coming. They're like, oh, God, it's Keith. Run! No, <laughs> I, and I said, I promise I'm not going to talk too much. But I have, I have fun with them. I learn from them. And it makes it so cool when they just are like, hey, we're just like with you guys. If you get good evidence, share it. And that's why that team, to me, will, well, <laughs> I mean, will ever, forever. I mean, that's, that's GH. <laughs> oh you wow! Can see what that stands for, and I think you, I think you know what the GW stands for. That's oh, awesome! Oh, that's a fan wow. right there. Well, he already knows about it. I had a that's very, so cool, man. I had a very bad time in my life when I started losing my family, and uh, Grant was there. You know. Oh, so, yeah. Good. 
Good, 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 good. I know. Oh, oh that's so how it started for me. Yeah. yeah, that's when I lost my dad, and I started yeah. having some really strange experiences, and I didn't even know you all existed. I had no oh. idea there was such a thing as paranormal groups, paranormal yeah. investi investigation. I thought it was Ghostbusters, a movie. Back well, the, in the internet day. wasn't really around. Then. No, it, it was me <laughs> and my cousins growing up, looking for ghosts. You know, telling ghost stories. You know, my I have so many stories. My family was super into it. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I totally relate to that that feeling. That's that's what got me into it. Those experiences. Well, are... you know what? That's the cool thing about shows like this. Having you here tonight is amazing, and the draw for people that wanted to have you on was like, have them on, have them on, have them on. Oh. So I'm telling you, when the time comes and you have your next journey that we add to that beautiful catalog. We so want to have you back because, yeah, as you can see back. by the people, they're like, mm -hmm. it's like a rock concert. They're like, <laughs> oh, you guys, you guys, thank you so much for what you do. So much. Oh my thank god, you. thank you for, thank for you. supporting us. Let yeah. me tell you a quick story about the hoodies. We did not, we're not twinsies, we didn't match. <laughs> intentionally like i literally just got in the shower and i got dressed and he was already here working with cameras and i and i looked at him and he looked at me and was like really this is the third time in a row this that week. we wear the same shirt the well, same one i think we're in sync we're, we're completely in sync you are. Oh, wow. yeah. I'm like, I'm not taking it yeah. off. I'm like, I'm not taking it off. Either. It's happened like three times this week. It's awesome. It's so awesome. Y'all are the same We're coming up on our 10 years, so I think. Oh, I think, yes. I think ten, 10 years, you know. This month. Yeah, yes. this month. October 27th. So we're Happier. we're excited. Yeah, we're going to take a little break and and, uh, and mm -hmm. celebrate our, our wedding anniversary. So. Good for you. Oh, we'll that's do pretty. that. Well, wow. What and, a show. Yeah, and before we wrap tonight can you tell everybody where they can find out more about your upcoming projects or follow you on social media yes um so just follow us on facebook he Twitter. got a new TikTok. Oh, I got TikTok. Make some. I'm starting to TikTok. Yes. Yeah. Kendall Welton so across I all too. the platforms. But he already paid me to it. He's already. Uh, yeah, I'm putting up a bunch of stuff that, like, behind the scenes I'm of working. of uh, the craziness of, of sets on TikTok. Um, but yeah, uh, Sleepless Unrest, uh, the, the film Sleepless Unrest, it's out now. Um, anywhere you can buy or rent movies, it's on. I Amazon, iTunes, Vimeo, Vudu, YouTube, Redbox, Google Play, Fandango now, Microsoft, PlayStation, uh, and then you can pick it up on uh, DVD at Amazon, Best Buy, or Walmart. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, yes. Yay. Yeah. So I feel like I needed to go like a little awa, 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 like uh, just kind of fast. <laughs> yeah, just kind of awa, awa. <laughs> I did it all for them. <laughs> yeah. We did that part out. All right, wow. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> But yeah, thank you both for joining us. It was oh. so much fun, you know, meeting you both virtually and hanging out for the night. And like he said, we would love to have you guys back. Oh, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Just out and ready. If you want to share, just let us know. But thank you for spending an hour of your time with us. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank for you, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you it. For just a minute. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Oh, they are so uh, awesome. I, I tell you, I got, I got in such a, just a little path in my head. I was going down that journey. I mean, we wanted to touch on that sleepless and rest, give the shout outs for, you know, obviously the house in between. And we had to touch on ghost hunters. But as you see, their catalog of beauty just is like that beautiful time and tide yeah. with so many people that know that. So, and I'm so excited to see what's next for them. Oh, you know, well, I mean, just now, you know, meeting them virtually and, and feeling their energy and their charisma. And oh, I'm just exactly. so excited for them. And I can't wait to see what's next. You know, I'm, I'm just excited to follow their journey as much as follow all their. That's what George was saying. Uh, great. Uh, Greg, uh, George was saying it as well. Their energy, just yeah. that love. They have such a beauty, beauty anyway. But then the fun, it's like, wow. And I'm just, I and then I got into it and I was like, yes. So, yeah. oh my God! I yeah. all all our peeps out there, flips up, George, Bob, uh, Robin's out there. All our amazing people, 
Maria, everybody, everybody that's in been in tonight, thank you, our Love and Light listeners. Uh, it's We wouldn't be doing what we're doing without you listening so and watching, so it means a lot to us, always, Absolutely. always, always. Absolutely. So, we'll be back again in two weeks, and two weeks will be the show before we go to Warren's Paracon, Secrets of Supernatural Paracon. So Yes, it's not long, but we we're going to be there. We have show before we're going to be away for Halloween, you and me, me and you. Ah, scary, scary. Oh, I know. Gosh. At least, at least I'll like bring a lot of chocolate. It's going to be Halloween. Oh, I know. Tell Flip to put it on the airlines <laughs> or drive it or something and let's do it. Oh. If anything, we'll throw it at people or something. That's right, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Our everybody, for tuning in tonight. Thanks. We will Thanks see everybody you everybody for watching in two and weeks. That's right. We'll be back in two weeks. Have a good week, everybody. Take care.